31-year-old Linda Slayton resided in Lakeland, Florida. She had two sons, 12-year-old Tim and 15-year-old Jeff. On the morning of September 4, 1981, Linda's sister, Judy Butler, visited their home for a cup of tea. But upon her arrival, Judy discovered her sister's lifeless body and promptly dialed 911. Linda was found lying on the bed with a wire hanger around her neck. She had been assaulted and strangled. Arriving investigators had the solemn task of informing her two sons. Jeff was found asleep in the living room and was advised to dress and go outside. As he stepped out, Jeff observed what appeared to be an assembly of law enforcement officers, news crews, and his aunt Judy, who was visibly distraught. Judy then conveyed to him the grim details of Linda's fate. In the second bedroom, an officer roused Linda's other son, Tim. Still in his nightwear, Tim walked past his mother's closed bedroom door. The door swung open as an officer exited, revealing the distressing crime scene. The investigators suspected that the assailant had gained entry through Linda's bedroom window, where the screen had been removed. A palm print was discovered on the windowsill, and DNA from an unidentified man was collected from her body. The investigators delved into Linda's life to determine if the perpetrator might have been someone close to her. They scrutinized Linda's former husband, Frank Slayton, whom she divorced in 1974 when she was 24 years old. He was a violent alcoholic and subjected Linda to abuse. However, the investigators could not establish a connection to the crime. Another person of interest was Jeff Slayton. He was questioned multiple times, but no evidence could be found to implicate him. The investigators also turned their attention to Joe Mills, a 20-year-old who coached Tim's football team at school. After her divorce, Linda faced financial difficulties, sewing her clothes to save money and being unable to afford a car. Mills regularly provided transportation for Tim to and from practice. However, the investigators could not connect Mills to the crime scene. Sergeant Edgar Pickett, a fingerprint expert at the Lakeland Police Department, meticulously examined the entire crime scene and was the one who discovered the palm print on the windowsill. The palm print and the DNA from Linda's body were preserved for potential future use. Jeff and Tim moved in with their grandparents, Clarence and Margaret Harris. They lived in constant fear and rarely ventured outside. They shared a room, with Grandpa Harris standing guard with a firearm throughout the night. The grandparents hoped that returning to familiar routines would help ease their distraught grandsons. A few weeks after their mother's funeral, the boys resumed attending school and decided to focus on football. A photograph of Tim's football team, taken a month after Linda's tragic demise, adorned Tim's bedroom. It served as a reminder of the life lessons his mother had imparted, to keep moving forward and never give up. In recent years, Jeff and Tim expressed lingering grief and guilt for not hearing anything that fateful night, unable to come to their mother's aid. In March of 1999, the investigators developed a complete DNA profile of Linda's assailant. All that remained was to find a match. Detective Brad Grice took over the case in 2001. He collected numerous DNA samples from past persons of interest and submitted them to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for comparison. Detective Grice also met with Jeff and Tim, taking DNA samples from the brothers to clear them once again. He promised them that he would not retire until Linda's case was solved. Frank Slayton, who had stopped drinking, volunteered to provide a sample, but none matched. Then, in September 2001, Detective Grice received a tip. Nearly a year after Linda's death, a 24-year-old man named Jimmy Ulmer attempted to harm a 10-year-old girl by entering her bedroom window. Ulmer was convicted and sentenced to 80 years in prison for the brutal assault, bearing unsettling similarities to Linda's case. Additionally, Detective Grice learned that around the time of Linda's death, Jimmy Ulmer had stayed with a friend in the same apartment complex as Linda. Detective Grice, along with Jeff and Tim, believed they had their prime suspect. Ulmer passed away in prison in 1996, but Grice obtained a DNA sample from his mother. When the DNA did not match that from the crime scene, it was a significant setback, and they felt as though they were back at square one. By 2005, Detective Grice was assigned to a new cold case unit and enlisted the FBI to continuously run the DNA profile through all federal databases. However, years passed without a breakthrough. In 2015, 
Detective Grice had to retire due to health issues, and he was unable to fulfill his promise. Nevertheless, in 2018, groundbreaking DNA technology emerged. Genetic genealogist C.C. Moore took on Linda's case, renowned for her expertise in investigative genetic genealogy and her success in solving cold cases. C.C. uploaded the DNA profile to a public genealogy website called GEDmatch. She meticulously constructed the culprit's family tree, piecing it together by sifting through birth certificates, marriage licenses, obituaries, and social media to compile names and connections. C.C. Moore explained that she identified three branches of the perpetrator's family tree, ultimately leading to one person most likely responsible. These genetic networks converged into a single family tree, pointing to a particular immediate family. The individual in question was the sole son of that family, making him the likely DNA contributor. After countless leads and dead ends, and after investigating and eliminating numerous suspects, C.C. Moore identified the man in a single weekend. The man turned out to be Joseph Clinton Mills, Coach Joe, who had transported Tim to and from practice. Authorities sought to confirm their findings before informing the brothers. C.C. Moore's report in 2019 ultimately established that Joseph Mills, then 58, resided in Kathleen, Florida, approximately half an hour from the crime scene. Detectives Tammy Hathcock and Russell Hurley, the next generation of Lakeland investigators on Linda's case, meticulously reviewed the original case files. They discovered that Mills had been briefly interviewed initially, where he claimed to have dropped Tim off at his house and professed ignorance of what transpired with Linda. Detectives learned that Mills had been convicted in 1984 of grand theft for forging a will, although he never served jail time. He was fingerprinted, and his palm print was recorded. In August 2019, investigators compared these prints to the palm print that Sergeant Pickett had lifted from Linda's windowsill almost 38 years earlier. It was a match. High-tech genetic genealogy had identified Mills as the likely perpetrator, and an old-fashioned palm print served to affirm his identity. Detectives Hathcock and Hurley needed to compare a fresh DNA sample from Mills to the decades-old DNA recovered from the crime scene. They covertly collected Mills's discarded items for further analysis. In his trash, they found a piece of used medical adhesive tape, which they sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Crime Lab for testing. Eleven days later, the tests confirmed that Joseph Mills had taken Linda's life. Only then could her sons, Jeff and Tim, be informed that the culprit had been finally apprehended. Tim expressed his former admiration for Coach Joe and his deep disgust upon realizing he had possessed a photograph of the man for all those years. Even more disturbing was the revelation that Mills continued to provide transportation for Tim after taking Linda's life. On December 12th, 2019, detectives arrested Joseph Mills. A photograph shows Detective Tammy Hathcock reading him his rights. Following the arrest, Tim and Jeff visited Sergeant Edgar Pickett, who was now 94 years old, to personally express their gratitude for his role in preserving the palm prints all those years ago. In 2022, Mills pled guilty to all charges. At his sentencing, Linda's family sought answers. Jeff yelled at him in court, Why? I just want to know why, Joe. Why did you take my mama from me? I loved my mama. We were happy. Mills's response incited further anger. I am a good person. I'm not the person they're portraying me to be. Finally, in February 2022, Mills was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. C.C. Moore emphasized the importance of the original crime scene investigators who collected DNA without knowing it would be used in criminal investigations. Their responsible and careful preservation of the evidence allowed the work to be done. Jeff and Tim are determined to move forward in the best way possible, living life well in honor of their mother and their families. They remain closely bonded, just a few miles apart, and share their passion for restoring cars. They frequently visit their mother's grave and light a candle beside her portrait every anniversary.